Okay, so what do we got here? Well, we have two complex fractions, and we want to find the difference between these two complex fractions, i.e. we're going to subtract away this fraction here from this fraction there. Now, just to be clear, when you're dealing with a complex fraction, you first have to just understand what a complex fraction is. So let's just uh, look at a regular fraction, something like 1 half. So in a regular fraction, you have that top number, that's called the numerator, and you have that bottom number that's called the denominator. So a complex fraction is where the numerator, or sorry, the denominator or the numerator, or uh, both the uh, numerator and denominator can be a fraction. So this particular fraction right here, we have a numerator of three, but its denominator is a fraction one fourth. So anytime you have a fraction involved in another fraction, something like this, uh, you're dealing with a complex fraction. So. If you think you can do this problem without the aid of a calculator, um, the worst thing you can do is to get your calculator out and go ahead and turn all these things into decimals and get the right answer. That's what we're not looking to do in this particular video. What we want to do is practice our fraction skills. And of course, I know you out there have some excellent fraction skills. So if, again, if you think you can do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the solution here in just one second. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, but it requires great math instruction. Clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you happen to be preparing for some sort of special test that has mathematics on it, I'm talking about things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. Won a lot of awards this year uh, with my program. Very excited about that. Uh, now, if you need a pair of great math notes, well, let me just tell you two things. One, you need to take your own great math notes, right? This is a big part of learning mathematics. But in the meantime, you can use my notes to study from. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get to this. Um, Again, all you need here is a piece of paper and a uh, pencil. And let's go ahead and take a look at the solution here. And there you go. 178 over 15. That is the correct answer. Now, if you got that right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+. Plus. Matter of fact, I'll give you an A++. Plus plus. That's pretty awesome. And we'll give you 100% and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice work. Okay, so... What's going on here? Well, uh, of course, you're going to have to know something about adding and subtracting fractions, but you're also going to have to know how to deal with complex fractions. And this is an absolute must for all of you out there that are studying, oh, I don't know, let's say middle school math and beyond, obviously high school mathematics, but you start really um, getting pretty heavy duty into fractions, I would say at the middle school level, where you start learning about them in the elementary school. But by the time you're in high school, you need to have mastered how to do problems like this. So let's go ahead and get into the exact uh, solution to this problem. And let's go ahead and take a look at that now. So what we want to do is be able to interpret this complex fraction and um, write these complex fractions in a different way. Let me go ahead and explain that. So here we have three. Now this big bar right there is divided by, okay, this is division. So we're gonna take three and we're gonna divide it by one fourth. So let's go ahead and write that differently. We're gonna write that as three, and then that fraction bar is the division operator. Okay, so we have three divided by the fraction one fourth. So we gotta figure this out and we're gonna put this in brackets. Okay, remember, we're thinking the order of operations. We have to do division before subtraction. So we want to go ahead and simplify each one of these uh, individual complex fractions, and we'll go ahead and find the difference. Okay, so let's take a look at this fraction over here. We have 2 thirds, and we're going to divide that by 5. So this is the best setup. You want to always take your complex fractions and rewrite them in kind of this manner, okay, kind of a horizontal manner using these other operators right here. It means the same thing, but um, that's really kind of the secret to unlock these complex fraction problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward here. 
So now we have to figure out what 3 divided by 1 fourth is. So how do we divide fractions? Well, hopefully you, uh, you recall that when you see the division symbol, we're going to turn it into multiplication. You can use this little multiplication uh, operator or this little x like that. But the deal is, is that you're going to turn division into multiplication, but you're going to flip this fraction to the right of that division operator so that 1 fourth becomes 4 over 1. So this is really 3 times 4, which of course is 12. Okay, so we'll uh, kind of make that clear right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at this part of the problem. Here we have 2 thirds divided by 5. So again, we're going to take division, turn it into multiplication. And then this is 5 over 1. So when we take the reciprocal or flip this upside down, we get 1 fifth. So how uh, do we multiply fractions? Well, hopefully you re uh, remember, you simply multiply the numerator. So that's 2 times 1, which is, of course, 2. And they're going to multiply the denominator, so that's 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay, so here is what we have. Um, so far, you know, as we walk through the solution here, we're down to 12 minus uh, 2 fifteenths. Now, you might be saying, well, this isn't a fraction in and of itself. Well, anytime you want to uh, have a number look like a fraction, you can always write it over 1, okay, when you have an integer value or a whole number. So now you got to figure out what 12 over 1 minus 2 fifteenths is equal to, and let's go ahead and take a look at that part of the problem. Okay, so remember, when anytime you're adding or subtracting fractions, the denominators have to be the same. So in this case, this denominator is 15, and this is 1, so... Uh, we're going to have to fix this up, and we're going to have to uh, figure out what the lowest common denominator is. So the lowest common denominator in this particular problem is 15, okay? That's the lowest common denominator that both 15 and 1 have in common. Hopefully you knew that. By the way, if you have um, any questions about the LCD or how to add or subtract fractions or anything about fractions, I have a ton of additional YouTube videos on fractions, and I would steer you towards two of my courses, which you can find in my Math Help program. My Math Foundations course, which is a nice little mini uh, three-chapter course, it goes through basic mathematics. Um, I'd also suggest my pre-algebra course. But let's go ahead and fix this problem up such that uh, the denominators are the same, i.e. the lowest common denominator. And the way we're going to do this is take this 12 over 1. So we have a 1 here. We want to make this into a 15. This fraction already has 15, so we don't have to do anything with this 2 fifteenths because its denominator is already 15. But this denominator is 1. So how, how do we get a 1 to turn it into a 15? Easy. Just multiply it by a 15. So 15 times 1 is, of course, 15. But we just can't um, uh, multiply 15 by the denominator. We're going to also have to multiply 15 by the numerator. Okay. So anytime you're rewriting a fraction uh, and you're multiplying by uh, one particular number, you have to multiply both the uh, denominator and numerator by that same value. All right, so 15 times 12 is, of course, 180. So now we're down to 180 over 15 minus 2 over 15. Let's go ahead and fix this up now. So again, because the denominators are the same, we're ready to go ahead and find the difference, i.e. subtract the uh, numerator. So this is going to be 180 minus 2 over 15. And of course, 180 uh, minus 2 is 178 over 15. And this fraction here is fully reduced. Uh, you can see 15, its prime factor is, in, or is uh, 3 and 5. And this is where knowing the uh, divisibility rules, okay? Those are rules to kind of uh, like quick check rules to see uh, if, a, if numbers are uh, divisible by particular uh, values. I'm talking about values like 2, uh, 3, 5, etc. These type of basic uh, values. This really helps you when you're trying to reduce a fraction. But you can see right here... Well, hopefully you can see, or you can kind of play around with this for a second, you'll figure out that this is fully reduced, fully simplified, and no need to turn this into a mixed number. In other words, you don't want to do this. Take, uh, take your 178 and divide by 15 and turn this into a mixed number fraction. As long as you have a nice, reduced, simplified fraction, that's perfectly fine uh, to turn into your math teachers. Most math teachers will give you full credit for this answer, but uh, if they ask you to... Um, change your answer into a mixed number, then of course you're going to need to know how to do that as well. Okay, so hopefully, for those of you who didn't get the right answer in the beginning, listen, don't beat yourself up, okay? Part of learning math, or actually all of learning math, is figuring out what you know and don't know and practicing 
uh, until you get better at math. Math is a skill, right? It's no different than learning how to shoot a basketball. You know, you're going to sit over here and you're going to make one shot. Let's say you make that shot and you're like, okay, perfect. Will you make, you know, every single shot? Well, no, you have to continue to practice because sometimes you're going to miss. Math is the same thing, okay? It's like you got to practice doing practice problems, but you don't want to just start doing problems if you don't know what you're doing. You're going to get frustrated. It's just like trying to learn how to shoot a basketball, but you're like, you know, doing it the wrong way. You're shooting over here or using an improper technique. You want to learn how to do one problem really, really well and then continue to practice a variety of problems. Okay, so if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.